Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. It's again early in the morning. I tell you, I have a real situation here because um, the Lord really wants me to make some videos and I've been putting it off. So every time I lay down I can't sleep because I've got this on my mind that I have to make these videos. Um, the Lord asked me, has been asking me to make some videos to break down some uh, some passages in the Bible to give it a more personal, feminine look, outlook. And uh, I haven't been <laughs> particularly obedient, but here I am trying to make these videos. Okay. <sighs> okay. Now, this is another one of those difficult topics that I uh, have to bring to you. Um, it's not difficult. It's actually quite beautiful, but it's just that it's um, difficult. <laughs> Oh dear. All right. Um, what I want to say is that uh, mm. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, Lord, have mercy on me. Um, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Uh, this is going to be called Like Father, Like Son. And uh, the reason I'm going to call it that is that Jesus clearly states that he's him is his father of one and that he does everything that the father does. And what the Lord has shown me, or at least downloaded into my spirit and helped me to understand how God operates, is that like a family... There is a head of the family, which is the husband. And then there is an administrator of the family, which is the Holy Spirit. The creative um, household administrator. And that is the Holy Spirit. And like in a family, that would be the husband and the wife. The husband is the head of the family. The strength, the, administer, um, the power, the authority the um, leader of the family. And then you have the wife who is the administration, administrator or helper. She's the runner of the household. She's the bearer of the fruit. <laughs> she makes sure everything runs smoothly. And so in God's administration, there is the Holy Spirit, which we see in actually... Um, let's go to Revelations chapter 4. And in front of the throne of God, in chapter 4, verse 5, um, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Uh, these seven spirits, these seven lampstands represent the sp seven spirits of God, or the administration of God. Um, we can't see the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is represented by these flames of fire that are before the throne of God. And the reason why I'm going to call this like father, like son, is that I believe that the Holy Spirit represents the feminine energy of God. Okay. And this feminine energy is God's wife, God's helpmate, God's administrator of his power. Okay. And the, the Holy Spirit is perfect. There is nothing, no sin or darkness in the Holy Spirit. And my belief, now you don't have to believe this, it's okay with me, but my belief, and this is what I believe the, Holy, the, the Lord has been showing me, is that in the beginning, when you go to Genesis, and it talks about the creation of man, God was showing us something about himself. Okay, about how God is, or what God is, or how God acts, and how we how is nature. Okay, we have we see mankind, and from his side comes this woman. I believe that the Lord is showing me that God the Father, the Holy Spirit came from his side and is fully God, but is a separate been separated from himself to form this. Uh, feminine energy 
this administration and it show, shows up in the form of seven lampstands before the throne. Uh, the Holy Spirit's God's wife, God's helpmeet, okay, in the spiritual realm. And Jesus Christ, who was like the Father, from his side when he died and, and he was wounded in the side and out came water and blood, just like mankind, you know, Eve came from man's side, we came from Jesus Christ's side. We are his bride. We are his administrators on earth. We are his um, physical power on earth. And we, we see this in the beginning of Revelation, like father, like son. The father has seven lampstands in front of him. Jesus Christ also has seven candlesticks around him, we, which represent the church. We represent that fire, that flame, the Holy Spirit that lives in us, but we're not perfect. We're being perfected, and the perfecting of the Holy Spirit is shown through the seven churches, or I would like to say the seven brides of Christ. We are, the, these seven spirits are in us. And I will show you, you know, let's just read actually right in the beginning of Revelation verses um, actually I should go with first the first chapter of Revelation and let's start with verse verse two who bear record to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of these things that he saw. This is talking about John is speaking. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits, spirits which are before his throne. Okay, now I want to go back. I want to go down further. Uh, to verse 9. I, John, also also am a brother and a companion in tribulation in the kingdom of, and patience of Jesus Christ was at the isle of called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard him behind me a voice Behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, which has seen right in the book and write it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And then you go further down. Oh, just look next verse. And then I turned and see the voice that spake unto me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment, down to his foot, and girded about with paps, with a golden girdle. And then he goes on further to talk about the candlesticks. Um, verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven church, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The church is is the bride of Christ. We know that the church is the bride of Christ. The church is represented by these candlesticks, which have seven spirits, seven lights, seven burning candles, just like the, before the throne of God. There are seven lampstands, which represent the Holy Spirit, God's help me, God's wife, God administrator. We are God's, Jesus Christ's fruit bearers. He has a wife in us. We are his wife. We are his helpmeet. That's why Jesus had to leave the earth to perfect his bride, to help us to become the perfect helpmeet, administrators for his, his word. He is the head. We are the body. He is the husband. We are the wife. We, in order to be perfected, Jesus is talking through these the seven letters, and not just, I mean, the seven letters are a fascinating study. Um, you can go on YouTube and really find some interesting information about the seven churches and their historical facts, they, how they represent this, different dis, um, dispensations of, of church age, um, how they represent the rapture of the church, all kinds of interesting things that are involved in the seven letters. But what the Lord wanted me to, sh to break down 
to make it more personal, to make it bring it down into the individual. Because each one of us are part of the bride. And there are things that we have strengths and weaknesses in Christ. And we he's trying to perfect us to become like the Holy Spirit, basically to become the, the perfect administrators in his kingdom for his truth. And and so this is what he's doing. And anyway, this is what I'm going to be doing in my next few videos. Um, please bear with me. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm going to leave it here because I'm already at 11, almost 11 minutes here. So I'm just going to leave it at this bite. This is a lot to digest. Um, like I said, I, I believe that that when God created man, he was saying something about his own persona, the male female aspect of God, that the Holy Spirit is a, a part of God, but taken from God and is just as much God, just like a woman is just as much a part of humanity as a man is, even though she was taken from man, she is not the head because she was taken from man. But she is just as much a part of humanity, in fact, an important part of humanity, because none of us would be here without a woman, because we were all born, that if you were naturally born, you came through a woman. So therefore, I said, like I said before, creation screams God's nature. And if we can understand nature, we can understand God, we can understand ourselves, we can have a better relationship with God. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. And I'll come back to you with a couple more videos.